Ah, good morning, everybody. All right, today is September 14th. Local time is just after 3.45 a.m. Um, Eastern time. We're uh, coming up on Pittman, Florida. We are on our way to uh, Umatia to pick up uh, a load of fruit juices, or it should be fruit juices. Uh, I've been here numerous, uh, uh, several times, I wouldn't say numerous times, but several times. Uh, in fact, I was just here not too long ago with that load that I took up to Lewiston, Maine. Uh, it was, what, a month or two ago, whatever it was. Uh, Alright, so uh, this load here is going to be going to the Walmart DC in Sterling, Illinois. Uh, been a long time since I've been there. Uh, I don't know that I've been there at all with JCT. I don't think I have been there at all with JCT. Uh, I used to go there a fair amount with Sierra England, but don't think I've ever been to the Sterling DC with JCT. That's a good four and a half years of driving with JCT too. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting to actually gonna be picking up, uh, delivering there. You know, it's, I don't mind. I actually like the variety of you know, going to different places and having to figure out different routes to take. Uh, it's, it's, that's the fun of uh, OTR lifestyle to me. Alright, so I want to talk about Fuel Island blocking and how truck stops handle the situation or how truck stop employees handle the situation. So this morning... Yeah, I pulled out of my spot, creep over to the fuel island. I wanted to get uh, at least enough fuel where I could uh, come down here, pick my load up, get back up somewhere onto I-10, or possibly, uh, we'll see. Uh, so, yeah, there was a bunch of trucks there in line uh, at the fuel island uh, at the Loves and Lake City. And I just kind of, yeah, well, one of them looked like he was not, he wasn't all the way up to the fuel island, so I wasn't sure why he was parked the way he was. So I go to the guy in there, the lane next to him. That person was in the fuel island, or uh, their truck was, I mean. No fuel hoses hooked up to the truck at all. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe they're just inside, whatever. And I, uh, yeah, I sit and wait, and wait. And wait, and wait. Ends up being 20 minutes. And now, mind you, I got out of my truck and actually went up to the guy's truck to see if he was even in there. He wasn't. So I go up and uh, I go inside the store. And uh, I start, you know, there's like three guys in line right there at the fuel desk. And I'm asking all of them, hey, are any of you guys drive for More Express? I, I think it was the name of that company. And they all said no. So, you know, when I got through getting helped by the, the people behind the counter, I started asking, hey, uh, this FYI is uh, some, you know, someone's blocking the, uh, I can't get fuel because someone's blocking the lane. And this guy uh, who's, who works there by the name of Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, you know, it instantly gives me some shit about how uh, it's uh, basically, to put it simply, he, he told me it was basically my problem, not his. And uh, I was like, you know, you have a PA system, you can always uh, announce on the PA, hey, uh, more express, you need to get out of the fuel island. You're blocking, uh, you know, people can't get fuel. Uh, but he wouldn't even do that. You know, he just kind of, you know, gave me an attitude about it. And, you know, so I go back out there, and uh, you know, I, I, I videotaped this guy's truck, and you know, show me, hey, he's not even in there and all that. Um, I don't know where the guy's at. He could be on a shitter, or in a, in a um, shower, or whatever. Either way, if he wasn't right where I was at, you know, the PA system, I guess it's reasonable to expect that if he's not in his truck, and he's not right there in the fuel island. There's a pretty good chance he's somewhere inside the building. So I would have thought maybe okay, get the PA, uh, get on the PA, and uh, say something about it. But the guy didn't want to do it. 
So it ends up, uh, the, the guy didn't even move his truck until 20 minutes after I got behind him. And then it turned out, uh, he it didn't even look like he was coming from the building. It looked like he might have been coming from the truck that was parked along the curb straight in front of the, uh, in front of his truck. Like, maybe it was somebody he knew or something, and, you know, like, uh, like, I have any idea that he's going to be inside some random truck that, you know, like, I, if he's not in his own damn truck, he's probably inside the building. That's the only reasonable explanation I could have, personally. So, yeah, he, he moves his truck forward after 20 minutes to the, the courtesy lane, and then he gets back out and goes right back to the... Uh, so wherever he was going to, which I assume was the, yeah, like I said, I assumed it was the truck that was parked along the curb, but I don't know, because I, by then I was already busy trying to get my own, set up my fuel purchase, get my, start uh, pumping my fuel and all that kind of stuff, so I didn't see where he ended up. Uh, I had reason to believe it might have been that truck, but I wasn't sure, and yeah, and then I, I go back, uh, when I finally get through getting all my fuel, I got 50 gallons of tractor, um, like 8 or 9 gallons of death, or whatever it was, maybe even 10, I don't remember. Alright, we are in Altuma, or Altoona, whatever it is, Florida, by the way. Um, Umatia is the next town down. Anyway, uh, yeah, and I get reefer fuel, and I was almost, uh, I was very low on reefer fuel, so I put in a good, uh, over 40 gallons of reefer fuel as well, and it, that thing doesn't, uh, that pump wasn't exactly the fastest either. By the time all was said and done, I he was already about half an hour in, and I go inside looking around inside there for the guy, and, um, uh, Nowhere inside, there was nobody inside the building except for a couple of uh, employees. And even when I was getting my reefer fuel, I told that Brian guy again, hey, this guy right in front of me was the one who is the one who's blocking me. And then so he gives me some shitty, uh, well, go to, uh, go up there and tell him uh, next time. You know, go tell him to get out of the way or whatever. Like, he's not in his truck. Uh, it's like, you know, if, and if that's the kind of attitude uh, that there that a love staff there in Lake City, Florida is going to give me and not even be willing to get on the PA and at least say something. Now, I, I can't do much, but they, you know, they can at least get on the PA if nothing else. And the guy didn't even want to do that. So, you know what? They're, I'm going to bad mouth him and I'm going to bad mouth that love because if that's their policy, um, screw that. Uh, I will not go there again. And, you know, because if they have that blase and attitude toward, uh, you know, getting people out of the fuel island, then they're not, they don't need to get my business. Uh, I'm still going to bring it up with their management and tell them about this guy's attitude and ask if that's the way uh, their people are supposed to be handling that situation. And, uh, you know, I'll suggest, well, you know, there are some truck stops that are actually starting to boot people's trucks now for blocking fuel islands. Why don't they do that same thing there? Um, so I, I'm gonna have some footage of that here for you guys uh, after we get here to, uh, once we get parked. Uh, in between when, I, when we get parked over here in Umatia and uh, when I go to drop my empty. Uh, this, uh, What is this guy? Is this? I can't tell. If this is a maintenance vehicle or if it's a emergency responder. I assume it's maintenance vehicle because the road work ahead and the vehicle doesn't look like it. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's moving very slowly. Yeah, it is a maintenance guy. As slow as he's going, I don't know. And the way he was kind of moving kind of made me wonder if he was uh, wanting to come up to me and talk to me or something. Uh, just the way he was kind of drifting a little bit to his left and toward me, uh, just a tad, was just enough to uh, get my attention and think that maybe he wanted my attention for something, but no. 
All right, we're only a couple miles away. I don't know, maybe yeah, mile or two away, whatever, from uh, from our shipper. We'll be picking up at Florida's Natural Citrus. Uh, it'll be right up here on the right side, a uh, short distance up. Now, last time I came here, I came from the opposite side. Uh, yeah, it's um, the old packing house. Right after, shortly after the old packing house on the right side, uh, we'll be, you know, just past that will be Florida, Na Florida's natural, no, it's actually Florida's natural growers, not citrus. Uh, we're on highways, Highway 19 and Guaran Street, or Guaran, Guaran Street, whatever they call it. It looks like it might be a French word, so Guaran is probably how it should be pronounced technically. I doubt that's how they pronounce it here, but, uh, locally, but then if you're staying true to the, the original languages uh, version, uh, or I don't know if that'd be... French or something else. Sounds European though. Maybe even Spanish, I don't know, but. Alright, so I did end up missing my turn because uh, what I normally do when I'm coming down from the Lake City area down to here is I'll get off the off of I-75 on the north end of Ocala. Uh, the same exit where the two pilot truck stops are on the same street. Uh, one on the left, one on the right as you're going east from I-75. Uh, that same exit there, Highway, f I want to say 536 or whatever the hell it is. I intended to use that exit, but I didn't realize I was, because uh, I had my map zoom at a uh, wider level so I could see uh, my current position as well as the the shipper. All right, right here is Florida's Natural, by the way. We've got to get over to the south end of it. Uh, right about where you see the, the lights right over there. There'll be a driveway uh, we'll go into. And we'll, we'll go into that staging lot, that same one that you saw me go into last time I was here. It's a golf cart driving down the road there. Or, yeah, just a little bit past. Anyway, yeah, I ended up missing my turn, so I ended up just getting off at US 27 southbound and took it over to the, um, whatever that drag is that goes right through downtown Ocala. Alright, I do see one JCT bobtail and another JCT with a trailer here. Now, I've always done drop and hook pickups here. I don't know that, I mean, it, I have seen the live loads happen here, I think, but what we got here, 42.19. That number sounds familiar. I just saw that truck not long ago. All right, we're going to come over here to the staging line. Uh, come up here. Uh, we'll have some slanted spots here. We'll get checked in. Uh, the guard shack straight up ahead, just like last time I was here. Now uh, we'll see what the status of the load is. Uh, it's not due for pickup until 7 a.m. So there's a chance I won't be ready yet, but... Um, we'll at least see. Uh, at the very least, I can get checked in and drop my empty or something and then hang out and wait.
guy here is a bonehead asshole blocking a fucking fuel island. I've been sitting here waiting behind this guy for 15 minutes. More express. Not even a freaking truck number on it. And the asshole guy back there uh, in the office at the fuel desk says he's a uh, they can't, uh, they can't move them out of here. Like, well, get on the damn PA. Tell them. I already tried getting a hold of this guy. I even asked people at the, who were in line at the fuel desk if... Uh, yeah, I even asked people on the fuel desk, uh, in line at the fuel desk if any of them were with Moore Express, and none of them said yes. I think the other driver was uh, turned out to be uh, hanging out with a friend or something in another truck nearby. Uh, I sat here for 20 minutes before he finally moved the truck forward at all, and then I uh, had to wait for him to come back all over and move the truck again so I could get out of here. And uh, this, uh, I don't know if he's employee or manager or whatever his name is, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N. We're at the Loves in Lake City, Florida. I went in there, there were like three guys in line there at the fuel island, at the fuel desk. I asked all of them, uh, hey, are any of you guys drive for uh, that company? And uh, they all said, uh, none of them, uh, they all said no. So I go up to ask the, that Brian guy, hey, can you, uh, you, know, uh, you know, usually you go to most truck stops, they'll put it on the PA or something. Um, the guy didn't even want to do that. He's basically had a, this is my, that's my problem kind of issue. Like, no. Your problem is uh, if you want to have that kind of attitude, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take my business elsewhere and put bad words about you guys out here and, uh, you know, you guys will lose business, possibly. You know, and I, that's not the appropriate way to handle a situation. You know, at the very least, just get on the damn PA or something and say that, uh, um, you know, hey, uh, something such and such, you're blocking the fuel island, move, whatever. If you don't want to do your job, then... Uh, don't do it. Go do something else. That's part of your job as a as a diesel fuel desk here uh, person now. All right, guys. We're finally ready to go drop our trailer. Uh, my load is ready for pickup. Um, hang on. Let me get my status changed. I don't want post trip. I want drop hook. Come on. Can you let me scroll or not? Thank you. Uh, first things first, we're going to slide tandems all the way back. Uh, turn the reefer unit on and set it to 32 degrees. Uh, I don't want to be on long enough so they can uh, verify that it's actually uh, 
uh, that it's working properly. And they're gonna do a trailer inspection over there before we get. Sorry, I gotta wait on the. I don't know if you were able to hear that noise. The there's a delayed reaction where the yeah you know, the the parking brake valve back there on the trailer. Um, it takes it doesn't right away uh, vent off all the pressure that comes out of the. Uh, the brake chambers. That's basically how the parking brakes on the trailer work. Where all well, the trailer brakes set, I mean. Um, now there's spring, it's spring loaded. Uh, we'll talk more uh, here in a second. Um, we'll get through this and uh, we'll discuss more. Okay, we are good to go. Uh, we're gonna go around to the west end of the lot and drop our empty. And then you'll see some slanted spots up here that I'll be going right past. My loaded should be in one of those slanted spots. Uh, I'll be looking for trailer 7170. Okay, so anyway, going back over with the trailer brakes. Uh, now, when you put, when you release the trailer brakes by pressing a red valve in, what happens is the constant supply of air goes through the red hose into the trailer, and then uh, once it gets out to the out there, it ends up going through a uh, a valve. It looks like an ABS valve. Now, there are two valves there. One's the ABS valve, and the other one is the parking brake valve, or the, the trailer parking brake valve, I guess you can call it. Alright, so one, yeah, one of these trailers right here should be my loaded. Um, Alright, so when it, when it gets there, and it goes through that valve, and once it gets past that valve, it starts pushing on the... Um, the side on the can side of the brake chamber and extends the rod, uh, the push rods on the brake chambers, and that releases the brakes. And then when you release the brakes, uh, it moves the valve into the opposite direction, and it's supposed to allow the uh, the air to escape, uh, escape out of the brake chamber and vent back out. And uh, there's springs that are inside the brake chambers that. Um, that push back, you know, that, that push the thing back in the set position. Now, uh, right here in this area, we're gonna find a spot where we can drop it. Um, uh, yeah, right here. Oh, yeah. How about next? This other JCT trailer, 7208. Put it right next to it. watching my head mirror there because uh, like I mentioned before it's easy to over rotate with a freight liner because it'll turn off practically on a dime even with a sleeper cab it seems not something I'm used to with my truck it's uh, the turn radius is not so tight in mine. Alright, this looks good.
Alright, I do have a fifth wheel release on this one. I just... Alright, yeah, it's released. I, did, I even heard it. I'll pull forward and drop airbags a little bit. And of course, I'm so used to pulling that fifth wheel lever manually. Uh... You know, I'm still getting used to using that because I've only hooked to uh, a couple of different trailers since I've had this tra uh, this tractor so far. Alright. Pretty sure I had it set right with the height. Like the trailer dropped down on me, but uh, it was still up above the tires from what I could tell, so it shouldn't be a problem. Should be uh, pretty easy for the whoever hooks to that trailer next to get underneath. Well, they'll have to drop the airbags almost certainly, but it'd be easy as hell for them to raise their landing gear. Oh, we got two JCT trailers in this row five. Let's see which one is mine. I think it's this second one, but yeah, this is a six something. That's yeah, 7170 is the second one. Parts on it, utility lane. There it is. That's the other thing. I'm not used to driving Freightliners. Uh, it's been a while, so that is, you know, I, I keep forgetting where the utility light switch is. My, the one on my Peterbilt is over here on the left side, so I'm, I'm naturally used to looking over on the left for it out of habit. Drop the bags. Oh, yeah, we're good. I'll raise them back up. Alright, so I'm gonna get it hooked up and pre trip and all that crap. Uh, once I'm done there, we'll. Uh, Check out and get out of here. All right, guys, we're ready to slide tandems and get out of here. Uh, everything looks, everything looks hunky dory on this trailer so far. Let me go forward. Maybe the pins are bound up. Shooting here, I'm gonna shut off the truck. It's 
probably something wrong with the trailer's ABS system, but I just want to double check that it wasn't caused by something else, like the, yeah, maybe skidding tires or whatever. Yeah, it, but it was on as soon as I hooked up the, as soon as I hooked up. But now, see, it's off now, so, see what I'm saying? It's uh, just some simple thing like that, or restarting the system. Might be all that's needed to uh, correct that problem. Uh, yeah, it's not on right now, so, and even though I just released the trailer brakes. So, hopefully, it stays that way. Alright, so they put a yard seal on the trailer. Um, you go ahead and break the seal and put your load locks in. That way, when you go to check out, they're already in, and uh, you know, all you really have to do is just do a quick little look, and uh, then you put the seal and your enforcer lock on and get out. Yeah, this is a heavy load. The uh, build out is uh, build out weight is forty one thousand eight hundred. Um, I think I want to have my towns just a little bit further back than I have them right now. Uh, it's hard to tell because the, the you know because uphill and downhill, whatever, and then whenever I'm uh, on the throttle or not on the throttle, it changes too. So it's not a really super reliable gauge. Man, it's going to be in the right ballpark. I see when I put throttle in, uh, in the, the pressure drops. But then when I let off the throttle, it goes right back up. So, like, okay, what if... I don't know what to believe now. Let's go ahead and pull forward. I do need a semi departure. Oh, damn it, that light's back on. Not good. If I go through a way station and they find that, they, they could pull me in for inspection and put me out of service. So, I'm really happy with that. Trying to resetting again. I need to go uh, get out of yard moves anyway. Okay, so we're ready to get rolling here. Uh, I say I don't. I have a feeling that just driving with the. Uh, I mean, just hitting the brakes or whatever is going to cause that damn light to come back on. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll just plan on getting it fixed somewhere. Uh, I'm not a fan of stopping at Lowe's for that kind of stuff. Uh, probably find a TA or something. But, uh, yeah, I'm... Florida is not short on way stations, uh, so it'd be hard for me to, to get out of the area without going into a way station. I didn't go into any on the way over here, uh, even though there were a couple that were open, I got bypass signals, but um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I wouldn't bet on it staying that way though. 
Oh okay, yeah, I'm gonna hit uh, 19 back to the north and then take 40 across over to Silver Springs. And then there's a highway up there, that 536, whatever that highway is that I can cut up to. Uh, I can stop with the pilot, one of the pilots there in Ocala to scale my load and uh, get out of here. All right, so that'll be the plan. I watch for deer and uh, there was a coyote I saw run across the road earlier, not too long before I started uh, recording this. Uh, I think there are signs up here for bears as well, if I remember right. Never actually seen a bear in the wild, but yeah, it probably will happen soon uh, eventually. Okay, well, uh, you got a pretty good idea of what's going on here, uh, just of what's up. Uh, hopefully that ABS light stays off. Uh, we'll be going to Sterling, Illinois. The typical route would be to take I-75 up to the Atlanta area. And then, uh, or actually I-75 all the way up to Chattanooga. Yeah, I'll go through Atlanta and then up to Chattanooga and then take 24 from there over to, uh, I-57 in Illinois, then 57 up to 64, 64 west to, uh, to just before you get into, well, not too far out of St. Louis and uh, up 55 from there. Uh, 55 and then up to, yeah, once you're on 55, you can go up uh, to uh, I-39, take I-39 up, uh, and then cut back across to the west on I-88. Uh, that is the more typical route. I don't want to go through Atlanta, though, so... Um, what I usually end up doing is take I-10 over to the west and get off at Highway 231 in Cottondale and then work my way up to Birmingham from there and then... Uh, yeah, I can work my way up to I-55 over there by uh, West Memphis. So that'll more likely be the route I want to take. Uh, like I say, I don't want to deal with that land area traffic if I don't need to. So um, highly likely I'll be taking 10 across over to 231, 231 up to Birmingham or no Montgomery. Yeah, Montgomery, and then work my way up I-65 from there to uh, Birmingham. Then I-22, uh, and then 269, and, yeah, and then 55. All right, well, that uh, settles that with uh, the general route I'll be taking. This load is due on the 16th in the evening, so... Um, Yeah, I'll have plenty of time to work with. Uh, actually, I'm going to be running on recap, so I really don't even have to run very far with this load today to, uh, to get within range of two more shifts. And I can't get there without my uh, my September 16 recaps either. So I don't really have to push very hard. Just, just get it there uh, anytime in the early morning on the 16th, and then, um, then I can empty it out when it's time to deliver and I'm going to assume that I'll be picking up a uh, reload out of Belvedere, Illinois after that. Uh, see where I think where that ends up going I don't know but yeah, you know, that's most probable uh, pickup point after I get done with Sterling. Alright anyway I'm going to go ahead and call this one a day. Um, it should be a much shorter video than the last one. The last one was just a little over an hour because uh, maybe part rambly, part also uh, giving more detail about the situation with my truck. Not this truck, but my truck, the Peterbilt. So, all right, anyway. Um, all right, you all have a good day. Uh, we'll probably have, uh, I don't know, me either a compilation video for you guys next or the delivery in uh, Sterling, whichever, okay? Uh, you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.